Hey everyone, have you ever wondered what the most well-rounded MMA stance is? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna answer that question. Hey everybody, I'm here to teach you what the most well-rounded MMA stance is. I'm gonna break this down into three sections. Let's begin. In our first section, I'm gonna teach you how to establish the stance. So first off, we're gonna get our feet and bring our shoulder width apart. We're gonna step our dominant side back, which in this case is my right hand, so I'm stepping my right foot. Left feet will step to left. I gotta keep in mind that when I step back, I wanna make sure that the ball of the foot is touching the, the ground and the heel is somewhat elevated. I also wanna point my toes 45 degree, at a 45 degree angle. Some people point them forward, some people point them to the side. I wanna ride in the middle. My knees are gonna be bent, my hands are elevated, and this is my stance. Now common mistakes. Some people don't bend their knees too much. They keep them somewhat straight out or somewhat locked out. Now this is bad because, because we have to twist into the ground to generate power, you can't twist into the ground effectively with straight locked out knees. Second, some people align their heels together. When you line your heels together, it puts this feeling, it gives you this feeling like you're walking on a tightrope. It messes up your balance, so we wanna make sure that we don't line our heels up and we set, make sure our right foot's more to the right, our left foot is more to the left. So you can see it from the side. Feet are shoulder width apart. I'm stepping back, ball of the foot is on the ground, heel is up, toes are 45 degree angle. I bend my knees, keep my hands up. Now, in section two, we're gonna learn how to walk in our stance. So let's go ahead and establish our stance now. We step our our dominant side back, angle our, our toes, bend our knees, keep our heel up, ball of the foot engaged. But now, when I wanna walk forward, I'm gonna step with my front foot first and then my back. The reason I take these steps right now, at least in two, is to help to keep the integrity of my stance. Now, if I wanna go backwards, I step with my back foot first and then my front foot. Pushing off my front, stepping with my back, have my front foot follow. If I want to step to the right side, I step my right foot first, same concept, then my left. Want to go to the left, left foot first, pushing off with the right, stepping my right foot out. Now some of the drills we can do, you just kind of walk forward, walk to the sides, mix it up a bit, always trying to keep the integrity of your stance, in any situation. Okay, now on to section three. Now, in our third section, I'm gonna demonstrate why this is the most well-rounded stance for MMA. I'm basing this off three things. One, being the punches, the offense and defense. Two, the kicks, the offense and defense. And three, the wrestling, the offense and defense. Now by punches, I mean punches and elbows, and by kicks, I mean knees and kicks. I'm also going to show some other stances that have weaknesses in these areas. With my stance, I can check leg kicks inside and outside, body kicks left or right, and head kicks very easily. Because I'm well balanced, I can establish my own kicks or offense. I can chop the leg, I can kick the body, I can work the inside thigh, or I can switch kick the ribs. When compared to a boxing stance, the boxer has no defense for the outside leg and body kicks. A boxer's stance naturally has a defense for inside kicks because their front foot turns inward. However, the right side of their body is susceptible to a powerful switch kick. In regards to kicking, a boxer's stance will make it difficult and time consuming to throw kicks. This telegraphs your offense, making it hard to land any strike flush. Now, my stance is wrestling defense. Because my stance has a front foot pointing forward, one leg forward and one leg back, this gives me the space and opportunity to sprawl or wizard if my opponent takes a double or single leg shot. Looking at the offensive ability of my stance matching up against a taller Muay Thai stance, the Thai stance cannot easily defend against my double or single leg takedown. This is because the Thai stance has its feet too close together to stop my double and there's too much weight on the back foot to sprawl or stop my single leg takedown. 
Now, trying to wrestle in Thai stance is even more difficult. The stance is so tall and the level change required is so low that it makes the takedown obvious and very improbable. This brings us to defending punches. The MMA stance gives you a great form so you can evade strikes with slips, dips, ducks, leans. You have the balance to parry punches or anchor yourself into the ground and block effectively. When it comes to punching and generating power, the MMA stance allows you to utilize small setup punches and dig in with big powerful shots. Its form provides balance which allows you to efficiently chain punches, elbows, knees, and kicks together. In wrestling stance, defending against punches is very tough. The stance is too front foot heavy to block anything more than straight attacks. The balance doesn't allow to parry punches that well, and the head is low, making the person susceptible to uppercuts and any other strikes in MMA. This brings us to punching and wrestling stance. Punching in wrestling stance has its flaws. Generally, the chest is too forward and you need more turning of the torso to be able to generate real power. This can and usually gets used against you by a counter puncher. They will take a punch to give a punch. If you are in that stance, you are on the losing side of that exchange. Hey everybody, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Till next time, this is Coach EJ.